This is something I'm going to talk about in my video coming out on Sunday, which is in a couple of days. So, um, hey. So anyway, yes, that relates to that. All right. <laughs> Carrie in the house. Cara. Hi. <laughs> You're brave to get on the hot seat. I know. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Give me give me some love right now. What do you what do you want to work on? Um. So I oh, my gosh, I don't even look right. I'm just so embarrassed. Oh, bro, bro, whoops. <laughs> All right. Need you to get it together, Cara. Need you to get it together. Okay, so um, yeah, I just uh, a couple months ago I broke up with my boyfriend, and um, I felt like he used me. Um, okay. Ooh, this is uh, going to be a juicy conversation. Uh, yeah, I worked for I don't want to say what company because this is live I, public, so you know I'd keep it to yourself. So, so why do you think why do you think you got used? Tell me that. Well, he liked me for the status of the type of job I had. Okay, so you were the one who posted about the leaving a good job. Yes. Um okay. so uh <laughs> wait, wait. So let me be clear. He ended the relationship because you you left your job. That's exactly. the exact reason he gave you. Okay, let me ask you a few questions. How long were you two dating? Four months, but I knew Four him months. back in 1994. He was okay, married, so you, I was married. He came to my wedding back in the day in 97, and we re reconnected. Um, okay, so you had a past experience with him. You reconnected. You dated for four months. How long did you date before you were physically intimate with each other? Oh like the first night? Just be, just own it. It was the second date. Okay, okay. Hey, I look at your, I by the way. Want to, but it's okay. By the way, I mean, but if you follow my channel, you know, do your due diligence before the penis goes inside my vagina. I'm trying okay. to do on this thing. Just right leave now. the phone alone. Just put it down. I know it, it just keeps falling down. Okay. I'm like, oh okay. my god. All right. So let's keep going here. <laughs> so. He, you ended a good job and he said, I'm going to leave you because you left your good job. Those were his exact words. No, he didn't say that. He just, it just. So you're projecting that that's what it was. Well, what was his course. exact words for leaving? He said, I'm dramatic. Okay. So wait a minute. Okay. By the way, I'm going to be talking to everybody in the camera here, Cara. So just please understand something. <laughs> This is a perfect example of how human beings gaslight themselves because he said you're being dramatic and you said he left you because of your job. Well, it was, like, it, it was, you know, he always showed off, you know, he'd tell everybody, you know, uh, introduce me as his girlfriend and say, <laughs> oh, this is what she does for a living. I'm like, why do people have to do that? I am. I was not born as that person with that okay, job. Fair enough. So, um, well, maybe he was proud of you. Well, he was, but you know, okay. So I leave the job, and um, why now is it that you know I'm not that special person? <laughs> well, no, he gave you a reason. You're dramatic, so own it. Are you dramatic? I'm Cuban descent, so. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Say that one more time. Okay, but. I'm no, first no, but generation let's, let's, Cuban, so. Okay, I get it. You got a spicy Latina Cuban. spirit within you. But for him, it's it might have been that there was. Okay, and it, by the way, there was a meme I posted. Uh, it said. It said. Uh, the meme said. Uh, I think you're a bit too much. And the woman's response, then go find somebody less. I think you're a bit too much. 
Like he's saying to you, you're a bit too much and your response is go find somebody less. Well, he wants to be with somebody who's subservient. I'm not going to do that. I'm okay, not, so, all right, so now this is another, whoa, 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 whoa. So that's another thing. Because you said he left you for a job. Now you're saying, well, he wants someone subservient. So A, he didn't appreciate your spicy Latina, um, you know, character, if you will. He also wanted somebody that was that would submit to him. So that's not he left you for the job. So why are you attaching yourself to this idea he left you for the job? Is it because he introduced you and would introduce you and say this is what she does for? By the way, can you tell us what you actually do for a living? I'm unemployed right now. Okay. How long have you been unemployed? One day. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Wow. How did he? Okay. Now this is fascinating. How did he affect your job? Um, so, so what job did you have when you were with him? Should I say it? <laughs> the job is not the company you work for. I mean, unless you're a CIA agent or a, okay, I, I was mean, a flight attendant. Flight attendant. Okay. Well, yeah, that's something cool. That's a cool job. <laughs> Not anymore. There's no well, I guess that. Well, you left there's a good no, job. There's no glamour, no sexiness in there okay. anymore. So, but I don't believe that. But we let's get to the real root of this because you have this belief that that was the reason, and then you're instead of actually observing what was possibly going on. First off. You knew of him 20, 30 years ago. Let's put that in a box. And because of that, when you got, get to get, when you got together with him, you fe felt a sense of familiarity. You felt a sense of safety. You right. felt that he wasn't a stranger. Does that feel true for you? Yes. Okay. So, which is a very common experience when we re... By the way, I reconnected with a high school friend of mine just a few months ago. And it was like, we were best friends. And we hadn't seen each other in 40 years. But because we had this built-in, you know, kind of almost family structure because we came from the same high school. There was this built-in familiarity. As the two of you began engaging in your relationship, he began noticing things most likely that didn't align with him. I had nothing to do with your job. And again, some people, some men are incapable of receiving someone's love or being able to navigate their emotions and the way they operate as a human being. And in addition, there are plenty of, how old is this man, by the way? 65. 65. Well, he is of the generation that women are subservient to men. He's of that tail end baby boom generation that was raised with that certain ideology. I'm not saying it's all men of that age bracket. It just happens to be a significant man. So why do you feel used? Because you said I was used. Why do you feel used? You know, our first meeting together, I kept telling him it's a meeting. It's not going to be a date. And I met him. He says, you're going to, he's so, he says, uh, you're going to fall in love with me in, within two months. Like he's so. Um, oh shit. I've said the same thing. <laughs> Come on. That's just being a guy. I mean, he's just being a guy. Guys, listen, some of the reasons why you like us is because we're bold. We're brash. We have peacock feathers. It's, it's rather, I mean. It obviously worked because you had sex with him the second date. So and it was not that great. <laughs> Let's not disparage the sex. <laughs> I'm not gonna talk about it. So, so, so he was a little bit. Why do you feel used? Let's get to the core of this one. Why did you feel used? I don't know. I don't know. I can't even think right now. I'm like in between jobs right now. And yeah, um, I just let it go. By the way, here's what being used is when somebody is, is intentionally manipulating you. I highly doubt he was intentionally manipulating you. Well, he wanted me to dress a certain way, and I'm very concerned. That's not. In, that's that's. By the way, it, that's making a request. Okay, so I'm I'm trying to. 
go with me here for a second. So he made a request. I'd like you to dress this way. That's not using a person. That's making a request. Well, no, I'm just throwing that out. I just. Yeah, I know, but that's not being used. You can say no. You have the power to say no. If you abdicate your power, then of course you're going to feel used because you gave your power to someone else. And most humans don't like to be told what to do. But if you gave him the right to tell you what to do, that's on you. It's not on him. That's my problem. Ah, given, let's go. Huh? Well, that's my problem. I've always given other people my power. And, ah, uh, well, now see, now we're getting seven, to the root of things. I just have to stop. No, no. Get it together. <laughs> Gosh, this, thank you. Well, so listen, bad. here's the thing. Being a grown-up, you can't blame your parents anymore. You can't go back and say it's for some other reasons. You're a grown up at this point in your life, okay? Right. You have the power within you. You have the power within you to make better choices for yourself. The question is, are you going to make a stand for your sovereignty? Are you going to make a stand for your power? And during this time off, so now you have this gift of time off. Hopefully you have enough resources to financially support yourself while you're on this break. This is a great time to do inner work. Right. So you don't give your power away. Not that I'm in love with the book I'm about to share with you, but this book, what's that title say? <laughs> Read it. I love bitches. Okay. So bitch stands for babe in total control of herself. I don't want to be a babe. Babe, in total control of herself, ES, I invite you to, just like he, the, the, uh, the animated cartoon, He-Man, I have the power. I want you to take back your power. Okay. All right, Cara, can I reach into the camera and give you a big, gigantic shot at the bear hug? Thank you. Oh, thank, thank you back. Thanks a bunch. Hug. Bye. Ciao. All right, bye now. Hi now. Lisa's in the house. Hi. Hi, Jonathan. Hi. I live, I live in LA, so I'm in I have to, I'm driving. I have to be driving. Okay. <laughs> so um I think I already know the answers. He was emotionally unavailable. I went on a couple dates with a man and he ended up ghosting me, but his parents are in the hospital, so I'm giving him a break thinking. He's got family. Wait, 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 wait. Time out, Lisa. Okay, yeah. when you say he ghosted you, first off, let's get some clarity. How many, how long have you been dating him? Just, um, we went on two dates, and so we've known each other four weeks. Okay, so you've gone on two dates, you've known each other four weeks, and he has, not, and when was the last time you heard from him? Uh, eight days ago. Eight days ago. And eight days ago was the last time the two of you communicated. Was that telephone, physical, or texting? He, I, I called him. He picked up the phone super quick, panicking, saying my dad got went back in the hospital. And I said, okay, well, just call me, another, call me when you're free. And that was okay. the last conversation I had. Okay. So he's obvious. Like, okay, you know I lost a child, right? Okay, when you lose somebody yeah. in your life, is it possible that they can be preoccupied with what's going on? Absolutely. Absolutely so when you said yes. I got ghosted, you just you're talking about you're in victim consciousness. You've been victimized. Uh, yeah, oh my god, he ghosted Possibly. me. He's been so well, cruel to me. And yet so that, his that, dad that is brings me my question. That this is where my question comes from. So I okay. agree with you 100%. 100%. Thank I you. Agree with you. Wait, I'm sorry. I, Can you say that one more time? I couldn't hear I, you. I agree with you 100%. Okay. <laughs> and I, I agree that I am um, working on that victimness, you know, because I did come from an abusive relationship, but I'm not bringing that up. My question is <clears throat> there is also, I understand there's emotion, but I'm not asking for anything, but why don't. I think that someone deserves, hey, a quick text or a quick message or a quick two minute call saying, listen, uh, let's not, let's put this on hold right now. My parents are really sick. I don't have, you know, this is not in my, in my best interest. We communicated really well up until at eight days ago. I think that what you're teaching us to be, to not give our power away is I deserve yeah. at least two minute, a one minute conversation. All right. Not a good time for me. All not right. Just hear, nothing. Me, hear me out for a second. <laughs> 
Sure. Does he sure, deserve sure. a text message from you saying, hey, how is your father doing? You know, I you must be going through a lot of stuff right now. I'm just checking in on you. Are you okay? Who deserve who deserves which deserve does he that. deserve that from I you? That. Or do you deserve it from him? Which I did one? That. Oh, you did that. Well, you didn't um, tell well, us already, that. Oh, well, okay. I did that a couple days ago, yeah. Okay, okay. So I, put that in the box. <clears throat> did the penis go inside the vagina? Nope. Okay, so you haven't been physically intimate. You had two we days. Kissed, you bear- we kissed and kissed and that's it, but that's it. Okay, well, I believe kissing is a rather intimate act. Most human beings trivialize kissing. Yeah. The fact of the matter is-, is he's basically a total stranger. You know very little about him. So yeah, true. you're kind of making a mountain out of a molehill. I'm not worried about like, I'm not... Uh, even interested in seeing him ever again. I just want to know for my healing and my health, is it, okay. will it, will it help me if I just put a message out there saying at least I deserve, you know, um, a, a co- you know, just an explanation, not giving any judgment to him and not putting any guilt on him. Just saying, listen, yeah. I'm a good person. I deserve a one minute say, Hey, listen, I can't, let's just put this on hold for now. I just think By that's way- an adult thing to do. Yeah, I, first not off, I, I don't think you should qualify you're a good person because then that's, you know, you don't need to qualify that. Okay, just simply, I get it. Okay, so I'm just, this isn't yeah. a reflection of whether you're, this isn't about your value, yeah. okay? Not about me, So right. what you can, and, and by the way, on your mm-hmm. second date, did he imply he would like a third date with you? Was there any discussion about that? No, I think he's also emotionally unavailable personally. Personally. Well, I mean, are you qualified to make that assessment? Only based on what I've learned from you. Okay. Well, so. you know, mo- okay. So we have to differentiate between people who are on, un- by the way, every single man and woman is emotionally available. It's, it's, do they have the capacity to express their emotions? That's where uh, a lot of men struggle with the ability to express emotions and women express emotions like they're vomiting all over the kitchen table. So it doesn't just because, okay, men have a hard time expressing emotions. Women have a hard time expressing emotions in a coherent way. I'm working on that. Okay. So with that said, um, what can you say to him? Is it even worth Uh, it? Should I even bother? That's what I'm asking. Well, I mean, I've moved on. It's okay. I, I, I'm going to say I, I have mixed feelings at it. You could simply say something like this. Hey, Tim, okay. you could say something like this. Let's call him Tim for argument's sake. Hey, Tim, um, I just want to say express how much I appreciated the time we got together on those few dates. You know, I really appreciate that you treated. I appreciate this. I appreciate that. Whatever it is you appreciate, acknowledge okay. that. Okay. I'm a little bit sad that I haven't heard from you, and I, especially after I checked in with you. I'm a little sad I hadn't heard from you, especially I checked in with you. Could you at least let me know you're okay? Because while we have a brief, we had a brief encounter, I still have some, I have some feelings about your well-being as I would any human being I've, I've inter, you know, I've, I've uh, interacted with. And and that's it. You can send it as a text. And then truly, if and I'll understand if you don't want to respond. I'll understand if you don't want to respond. There's no response necessary. I'm just sending this out. I wish you and if and if I don't hear from you, I wish you all the best from this journey. By the way, Lisa, you can come back and watch this and rewrite everything down. I just share it. That's not telling him what he did wrong. That's simply expressing gratitude for the time together. You were sad you didn't hear from him. Uh, You know, if I don't hear from you, you're saying that's okay too. I'm not attached to an outcome. This is probably one of the most empowered ways you can approach what happened between the two of you. That's where I was going with this question. Thank you. So you did, okay. 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 Because I really have no interest in probably ever going back out with him again. To be honest, I've moved on and, you know, this is this is okay. But I kind of want to stick up for, you know, like kind of be in charge of changing the narrative and like, let's not do this to each other. Let's give each other an explanation why it doesn't work. Like be adults and just say- Well, you, you got to understand. Don't. Okay. 
I've, I know I've, that- I've gone out. Okay, let me just share something with you. I've gone out women who I think are bipolar or borderline personality or just batshit crazy or a pain in the ass or whatever. And I don't tell them what I think of them because those are just my thoughts. Okay. I don't need to tell them that I think that they remind me of Glenn Close in Fatal Attraction. And I've had situations okay. like that. Okay. I've literally okay. had situations where I've been scared shitless because I have no idea this woman could be unhinged at a moment. But I don't need to tell her she's Glenn Close from Fatal Attraction. You don't right. need, we don't okay. have, we don't have a responsibility to tell people how to live their lives. Okay. What Correct. you have as a responsibility is in your sovereignty. And just like in my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. There's a link below to get a copy of the book. Chapter one, speak your truth. Do it with kindness. What okay. I just wrote this script, and you can go back to the 40-something at minute mark and go watch it. I gave you a script of how to articulate to you in a kind, loving way. And you okay. simply say, I was saddened that you haven't reached out after I checked in with you. That's all you need to say. You don't need to tell them I'm a good person and you should okay. do this because that's what people need to do. Okay. Giving okay. your power away means standing in your sovereignty or excuse me, being in your sovereignty is being, you know, being diplomatic, being graceful. Because Stop. that's how we <laughs> that's get more word. into our power. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Yes. Okay. Let me know. Thank Can you. I reach into the camera and give you a big, gigantic Jonathan Bear hug? Yeah, just give all the cars a hug, too, because there's a lot. Okay, I'll give the cars a hug. Thanks, Lisa, for your share. <laughs> Thank you. Take, appreciate Thanks. it. Take care. All right. Thanks. Hey, with both Cara and Lisa's share, Cara first. Uh, I want to address this really quickly because in her share, she, I believe she, she took the sur- a, a judgment she had about her own fear about quitting her job and made that the reason for the relationship ending when he clearly said she thought she was dramatic and also uh, he was looking for someone subservient. So we have to be careful when we gaslight ourselves. The other way we gaslight ourselves is like in the situation with Lisa. And what I mean by gaslighting is we make up a story or narrative about another human being that they're supposed to operate a certain way. And I'm here to say is, you know, most people are good people. Most people are good people. They're just, you know, most humans struggle with interpersonal relationships. They do. This is why I, you know, it's frustrating out there because the reality is, is, and every one of you watching thinks you're the exception to what I'm about to say, but most humans are really still infantile in their emotional maturity and their relationship skills. So when we learn how to be better communicators for ourselves, we then become more of a role model for the person we're in that's in our lives. But more importantly, we become a magnetic attractor for that person that can meet us in the same space. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know. Post a comment below. I'd like to hear your thoughts. Also, if you like the, the, the hot seat for both those women, please give me a like button. Please hit that like button please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you can be notified of new videos as well. And if you want to connect with me after hearing what I just shared, post or check out the links below to schedule a discovery call with me.